Howdy folks, a little package just arrived in the mail today. I want to thank Banggood for sending this to me. I'm going to have a product link below in the description for anyone who might be interested in this. Uh, give you a hint, just by looking at all the uh, different brands of micro helis here along with my FR Sky Horus radio. Uh, this is one of these multi-protocol modules and I've been getting told by so many other um, FR Sky users and OpenTX users that this is such a great accessory to get. So we're going to see if it lives up to all the hype. Uh, this one is made by iRange X and it's their IRX4 Plus model. There's a couple of different ones. This is the latest and as it says right on here it's a 2.4 uh, gigahertz 4-in-1 TX module. These have got four different RF chips in them, which are responsible for a good majority of the uh, protocols out there on the market. So you can fly a good number of uh, different RC aircraft with your one radio. And orchestrating it all is a little STM 32-bit uh, processor that we are so familiar with in the hobby. So let's get into the box and have a look. So in there we get our little module and there should be an antenna as well and an instruction book which I'm going to have to digest before I get much further in this. Looks like we've got some jumper pins. Uh, let's just open this up real quick. This little module just it fits in the JR type module ports in the back of the radio. There's the input pins this specific one, the one with the little yellow knob, the other one doesn't have that. This one will work in both PPM mode, so if you've got an older radio with a JR port with PPM communication, you could use this. Or, of course, if you've got OpenTX, then you can use a serial communication where you can access the protocols direct through the radio and you've got access to more of them. As it comes out of the box, there's 30 different protocols. Uh, I'm going to show you in the instructions which they are, or you can look it up online. You just select them with this little dial. One thing to be noteworthy of, it's, you know, there's a little line in here which will point to the different numbers, but you, you don't really know which way is up or down. There's not an arrow or anything. But hopefully this is showing the one side that doesn't, that's got a smooth kind of a, a, there's no ribs in it, it's just smooth. That's the top, or that is the one that would point to whatever selection. So say we wanted to select protocol A, you would want that smooth section with the notch pointing to A. Uh, this is a bind button, not all protocols you have to bind, but uh, for people used to spectrum or whatever, yeah, you'd be holding this in as you power on the radio, and it would put it into the bind sequence. So we've got a little SMA connector on the top, there's the antenna. Make sure whatever you do, you have the antenna on before you power this up. Because powering up a transmitter when it can't radiate its energy is a quick way to burn out the RF circuitry. So as you can see, this is a tilting antenna and it turns. Likely a sleeve dipole in there, which would be pretty standard. And here, I'm just going to grab my radio. Let me just pause this. So I'm curr currently running a uh, Spectrum DM9 module in my Horus, which I've really been having good luck with. This runs in PPM mode, so I'm running all my smaller Spectrum uh, birds with this, and I use the FR Sky on all my larger stuff, so I've got the telemetry and all that. So here's our iRange X module. So it snaps in really nice, nice solid fit. And what I thought I'd do is, first part of this video, I'm just going to show you how to do this in PPM. We'll see if it works in PPM mode. And I'll probably do a whole separate video on serial connectivity, because I think I'm going to have to flash, reflash my firmware in here to get the latest edition of the, all the different multi-protocol uh, versions that uh, OpenTX will uh, communicate or whatever it does with this. Uh, I don't pretend to be an expert on this stuff, that's for sure. I thought though we'd open up the uh, module first though, just take a quick peek at it. Before going any further, I thought I'd uh, mention a very helpful website if you're new to uh, DIY multi-protocol modules like I am, and it's uh, the github.com uh, site, and this is the uh, DIY multi-protocol -pro TX module page. 
and tons of useful information on here. So I'll link to it below in the description so you can link directly into it and peruse it at your own leisure. Uh, if nothing else, just look, read the introduction section about a third of the way down the page. Just tells you how the multi protocols work, um, their evolution, what different ones are available, you know, ready made like our one from Banggood here, or obviously scratch builds and DIY builds, and all the different protocols, all kinds of great stuff, and how to get started, troubleshooting. So, very informative web page. If you get one of these modules, this is pretty much one to uh, bookmark. Before gandering at the guts inside this thing, thought we'd just go over the protocol list real quick. As it says here, incomplete and expanding. This is uh, open source stuff. People are always adding new protocols to it. But this is what we've got right now. As I mentioned, the dial is what you turn to make all your selections. Um, it's kind of weird. It goes from 1 to 9 and then it starts from A, B, C all the way down to F. I don't know why they just don't start at A, uh, you know just use letters instead of dividing it, but for whatever reason that's what we've got. In the first position it's serial and zero, so you don't worry about that in PPM selection, but the rest of them, one to nine, A to F, that's your top half, with the green LED off, that's what you would select up there, and if the green LED is on, you're selecting the bottom half, uh, zero to nine, A through F. The top half seem to be the most popular protocols, at least what I'm familiar with. Of course, you can pause this to look at it, or even better, just look at the product link and go right to the product page, because they have the list and the manual on that page, so you can really study it. And if you're interested in what RF chip is being used, which are the four RF chips for this specific protocol, it shows what they are. Let's open this one up. Just two little Phillips screws. And then there's just pivots off the front. And there's two little clips on the back that hold it to the bottom. And there's our little antenna connector. It's just a little UFL connector. I think this board will lift right out. Yes, it does. So we'll have a look at the back of the board. So a little STM. There's the little STM chip, little clawed flat pack. Nice uh, solder job looks like on all the different components. There's the five pin connector that goes into the JR port, type port, and then under here would be our four um, RF, all our RF stuff, the four RF uh, chips, and there's our selector dial, little tactile button for the bind, and then you've also got a USB port. I don't know a thing about this, I like firmware updates and all that crap, uh, I just, it's one part of the hobby I do not enjoy at all. Uh, some people are really into it. I don't like it one bit, but I imagine you can get the firmware from GitHub. You probably have to get an STM32 bootloader uh, driver for your computer uh, to hook it up. There's also, like I said, it came with these jumpers and different pins. These you can actually solder right in. I just read a few little brief things on GitHub, how that's done, and that's another way to connect it to download firmware. And update it but I have no interest in, in that and in fact I'm kind of hoping it works in PPM mode because I really don't even want to have to upgrade my firmware and my Horus. I hold my breath every time I do it I just I don't like doing it but that's just me. Hopefully it'll work in PPM mode and we're gonna get this back together and see if it does. thought we would start with something simple a blade product so here's another one this is a uh, 130x blade helicopter and we have, it's already in bind mode, the little blue LED is flashing. And we've got our iRange X uh, module in the back of the radio here. And we've got the dial selected to number 8, which according to the chart is DSM X. And we'll just power this up here. Mm, you turn me on. Now hopefully the flickering isn't too bad. Uh, these displays are actually quite hard to video. It seems the... Uh, you know, the refresh rate of the screen off and matches the shutter speed and you get that flickering. I've got it set to a fairly decent contrast here. This isn't the normal color, but hopefully it's enough to uh, see what we're doing here. So I've already got a model set up, the Blade 130X. I've been flying this with my uh, 
Spectrum DM9 module for the last over a year or so, and it works great with that, but now we're going to see if it works with this uh, multi-protocol one. So you would just set up your uh, model, whatever you're flying, as you normally would in your radio, and you want to go into the model setup menu, and this would be the same for the, uh, you know, the Horus 10, or of course any of the other um, uh, FR skies or open TX radios menu layout is very similar and in the model setup you want to go down to the RF selection there we are so when you first a lot of times when you go into this the internal RF will be turned on so you want to make sure the internal uh, transmitter is turned off there we go and what we want to turn on is the external RF and then that sends power to the um, the module and then it starts communicating so we're in PPM mode that's what we want to be in and then the channel range is a couple of other selections here so we'll just keep it at the channel 1 to channel 8 frame rate 22.5 milliseconds yeah it could be 22 you know whatever whatever works I'm going to set it to 22 and this 400 microseconds, I kind of think of that as shifting the frame. So, you know, you've got all the channels in this frame and you, you can shift it. And what you'll notice is your servo centering on your models will shift as you change that to 400. I found 400 with the Spectrum, factory spe Spectrum stuff. It sets the servos pretty close to where they were from your factory radio, you know, if it was a DX8 or whatever, DX9. But you can change that uh, if you wanted to. You could go, it's in uh, 50 microsecond increments. With Spectrum I found between 350 and 400 will get you. 350 it's kind of on one, they're all the servos are shifted to one side of center. 400 they're shifted to the other side. So you pick the closest one, but of course you're gonna have to reset up your uh, machines, you know, reset your uh, centering points and everything. Let's just go back here. So now what we could do is we could actually turn the radio off and then hold in the bind button on the module when we turn it back on. But there's an easier way to do that so you don't have to go through the whole boot procedure again. Just go back into the uh, PPM there in the mode and turn it off. And then back here, you'll see the power light has gone off. We'll hold in the bind button and then we're going to turn this back on and our little LED should be flashing oops I guess we better select it first there we go and our LED will be flashing to say it's binding keep holding the button in until the aircraft binds and there we go looks like it's working There's our Better high. tail rotor is working Collective somewhat working. Shit is about to get real. Yeah, I mean, obviously you're going to have to redo your setup on it. You know, recenter your servos, set your collective range and everything. But we know it's bound. And that's the main thing. So let's try something a little bit simpler. Hubson here is in bind mode. The little LEDs are alternating back and forth. And according to the manual here, what is Hubson? It is dial number three or position number three on our dial so we're in eight now what I would recommend is somehow marking this dial so it's very plain to see which is the actual pointer side you know it's a pain trying to look for that flat spot so uh, you know maybe put another mark on there or something but anyways we've switched it to position three for the Hubson protocol and we'll turn this on And I've just got a simple little four channel heli here. We'll just bind it to uh, that model. Uh, and again, we'll go down to our RF selection. Make sure the internal RF is off. External, we'll go to PPM. And I don't even think we have to, yep, it's already binding. It, this one auto binds. You don't have to hold in the bind button or anything. So uh, that should be it, yep. There we go.
try one more. Let's try one of the uh, best little fixed pitch micro helis on the market right now, the E Sky 150 V2, same as the Blade uh, 70 S. So we will plug this in. And that green light should flash when it's in bind mode. There we go. Oh, we gotta turn this off. And reset our dial. So what is FR Sky? Or sorry, E Sky. Position B. There we go. Turn her back on. Okay, we're still in that simple little uh, fixed pitch heli, so we can just re, uh, redo it in that. No big deal. Go back down to our RF mode. So again, internal off, very important. External, PPM. Nothing. So maybe this one we have to hold in the bind button. So we'll turn it off again, and this time we'll hold the bind button in. Turn it on. Bind button's flashing. Keep holding it in. Nope. Not working. So it doesn't look like the uh, the eSky, at least this version of their protocol they're using in the V2, uh, works with what's in there. Now, this is where getting into the actual serial communication may, may, may work. I'm not saying it will, but it may because it gives you more protocol options. So in the next video that I'm going to do, we will do... We will actually set the uh, module up for serial mode, so we're going to have to flash new firmware in this. And we'll go through that whole procedure as much as I hate it. Uh, looks like we're going to have to do it. At least try. Cheers, folks. See you uh, soon in the next video.